But so far, the commanders have made the biggest move, and we wanted to get some more insight on their newest cornerback. They needed not only a starting corner, but a corner one, and they got one in Marshawn Lattimore, a former four-time pro bowler with the New Orleans Saints who's coming to the nation's capital. Jeff Nowak is the sideline reporter for the Saints on their radio broadcast, and he joins us now on the fan in D.C. Jeff, thank you so much for the time. So let's just start with how healthy is Lattimore. I know he has missed this past game, two games this season with a hamstring. Yeah, you know, that's going to be uh, the question, right? And, you know, there was, um, you know, it kind of goes back to the 2022 season because Marshawn Lattimore was remarkably healthy over the first four or five years of his career. And this all kind of started, and I know this is kind of a roundabout way to answer your question, but this all kind of bridged from an injury in 2022, kind of a freak injury, kidney injury, that took him a while to get back from. And there was some thought within the building that, hey, he should be back by now. It took him longer than we expected. And that kind of, created a, a scenario where there there's a rift between the coaching staff and, and, and Marshawn a little bit. Fast forward to 2023, there was some more ugliness. There was a high ankle sprain in week 10, never got back, finished the season, um, hurt, did not return. And this, and then you kind of come to this off season, Marshawn was kind of on the trade block and then they kind of worked things out. You went into the season, everyone was hunky dory. Everyone said, Hey, I'm committed, whatever. Um, then week two hamstring injury, I'm sorry, week one hamstring injury leaves early against the Panthers misses week two with a hamstring injury, right? This is the same injury you've been working through, um, left early in a loss to the Broncos with a hamstring injury left early in a loss to the chargers with the same hamstring injury. Um, and then missed his last game with a hamstring injury. So the question becomes how significant is this hamstring injury? And is it really more of a question of is the motivation there to work back from the hamstring injury? And I think the commanders being willing to make this trade and give up a decent amount. It wasn't a, you know, the Saints are just trying to ship this guy out of town. We're going to give him, you know, a bag of balls and move on a third round pick, a fourth round pick. It's a significant return mid season. Um, So clearly the commanders think that this is not a hamstring injury. That's going to linger. I tend to agree. I think, there, there's a question of motivation when it comes to March on. It just has not been there. You fired the coach. You know, that, that's all kind of a product of the same thing. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated to see if this hamstring injury, this hamstring issue miraculously disappears and he's healthy the rest of the way. But that's kind of been the question because he's been a hurt each of the last three seasons. And you start to wonder, okay, can this guy stay healthy? Um, so that's, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to find out. Does he still have his max fastball from when he was a pro bowler, an all-pro caliber player, and, and one of the best in the game? Oh, I think so. I, I think so. He's 28 years old, and he was playing really well. When he's been on the field this season, he's been really good. He's kind of a true outside corner. He's the guy that you, you know, the Saints haven't really shadowed much the last couple of years, but, you know, those, the matchups with Mike Evans and the Bucks were always kind of appointment viewing because he's the type of guy that you say, okay, this is their – star wide receiver he's going to follow him around the field he's going to shut him down um and he can still do that now the the saints kind of went away from that a little bit this last year they felt good about Paulson and Debo and they started playing sides a lot more and I don't know if that's necessarily um the best case scenario for Marshawn he's he's the kind of guy that is at his best when he can really kind of lock in sink his teeth into a matchup and frustrate that guy take that guy away and he's probably as good as anyone in the NFL at doing that he's a man corner um, he's a guy that you want to go to if you're just going to lock up on the outside. He's not a guy you want to throw into zone. Um, and, and I think he can get lost a little bit in coverage when you, when you don't have that kind of physical man matchup. But I, I haven't really seen a drop off when he's been healthy. The, qu- the problem is he's missed a lot of games over the last few years. And, and when you're not on the field, it doesn't matter how good you are. So um, I, again, I think that it all comes down to health with him. But I do think when he is out there, he is still that kind of top five man cover corner that every team wants what did you and folks around the saints make of the return from washington for Lattimore? i mean i i was a little surprised i didn't expect to see that much coming back i I thought they'd probably get a third round pick for him i do wonder you know we don't really have a lot of information on how that deal went through yet i i wouldn't be surprised if if it was kind of like hey we could either give you the dolphins third rounder it's going to be a lot better or we could give you our third rounder and a fourth rounder um i I think the return is about as good as you could hope when you look at some of the other trades for cornerbacks in the last few years 
you're talking third, fourth round range. Like it kind of goes in the same range as a Jalen Ramsey from the Rams to the, to the Dolphins. So, I mean, you never want to trade away star players, but the Saints are in a situation that I think it was best for both sides to just move on. Like I said, there's been a little discomfort in terms of how he's fit in that locker room and just that locker room in general, how it's, how it kind of committed to Dennis Allen and the Dennis Allen era, which kind of came not so gracefully to an end this week. Um, so I, I think generally speaking, you should be happy for the Saints with the fact that you were able to turn an asset, or turn Marshawn into some asset that you can push forward at all. But all that said, you know, you look at that 2017 draft that really kind of set the Saints up for success in general over, you know, that period, the end of Drew Brees' career. All those guys are pretty much gone, right? Only Alvin Kamara is left, and Ryan Ramchak is technically still there, but he's basically retired. Um, so, you know, it, it's a frustrating moment that it got to this point. It's a frustrating idea that you had to get to this point. But when you consider that you were able to turn it into anything at all, um, it, it, you can't be mad about it. So it sounds like then really needed a fresh start at odds with the team and basically wanted out. I mean, am I paraphrasing correctly, or is that overstated? Uh, I mean, it, it, Marshawn kind of, it, it's tough to know because Marshawn does not speak much. You know, he, <laughs> I, I've, I've wondered for a while if Ohio State has like some media classes where they, t- they teach these guys to like mumble under their breath to the point that no one really even tries to talk to him because we've had a lot of Ohio State yeah. guys come through this building over the last... skip those classes. Yeah, he didn't go to that one. Well, a... right. That's the weird thing is some <laughs> guys aren't, but like Chris Olave, Mike Thomas, Chase Young, and you know Chase Young. Uh, oh, we all, know all him very guys, well. We How's he great? doing, by the way? Yeah, not very talkative. Like they try to avoid the media by not talking at all. So it's really tough to get a good gauge on where Marshawn is. But there's been there has been some very clear, um, you know, dissension. Like it just uh, last year they probably felt like he could have gotten back and he didn't work back as uh, as hard as maybe he could have uh, to get back from that ankle injury late in the year. In the Saints were still in contention at that point, right? They won four of their final five games. They had a chance to make the postseason. They missed out on a tiebreaker. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it, a fresh start will do Marshawn good. And, um, you know, they tried to make it work. They got a lot of really good seasons out of Marshawn. He's, he is an elite player. Um, but I, I do think, yeah, th- this break was inevitable. And, uh, you know, it, it happened now. It, it could have happened in the offseason. I don't think the offers were there. I don't think the, the trade interest was there. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is probably the best option for both sides. Yeah, you want to quote from Chase Young, I would advise not trying to catch up with him at OTAs. He will not <laughs> be there. Jeff Nowak from New Orleans, breaking down the Marshawn Lattimore trade here on G and D. Uh, you touched on this a little bit, Jeff, I'd love for you to go into it. Scheme design fit. Where does Marshawn Lattimore fit best? Cause here in Washington, we have an amazing habit of taking cornerbacks that were thrived in different schemes and then having them do totally different things and have it be a failure somehow. Where is he best suited? How is he best deployed? I mean, like I said, like, I think he's a guy that you can just say, hey, that's their top receiver. Go take him away. Follow him around the field. Shadow him around. He's not a guy who plays in the slot. So that's what you've kind of seen, you know, when Marshawn is at his best, you'll see teams kind of shift, you know, their top receiver into the slot to get away from him. He's not going to follow a guy into the slot. I, I mean, he, it's entirely possible that he would be at home in the slot. We just haven't seen them, the Saints do it. But, no, he's going to be an outside guy. Um, and you want, again, you want, he, he fits best in a scheme that's going to play a lot of man to man on the outside. And that's what the saints have done throughout the course of his career. Uh, I've never been particularly impressed with him when you've tried to go into zone. He's also a guy that, you know, when there isn't that elite receiver matchup, I think that he's, I don't know. He's, he's the type of player that really kind of locks in when he feels like there's a matchup worthy of his, uh, attention. When you go up against a team that really doesn't have that true number one receiver, I remember a game against the Giants a couple of years ago where it was like, I guess I'll cover Sterling Shepard. I guess I'll cover John Ross. And he kind of got lost in that matchup. And, and I think that's where he can be a little frustrating because you, it doesn't always feel like you're getting top end Marshawn Lattimore effort when the, you know, you're not going against a Mike Evans or even like a Nico Collins last year kind of, kind of took him for a ride. So um I, I don't know. It, it's tough. And I don't know exactly what the commander's scheme is. He, the Saints are going to face it uh, later this year. So he's going to get a chance to go against the Saints. And I'm sure he'll be circling that matchup on his calendar. Um, but that's what it is. Like, he, he's the type of guy that you can, you can trust on the outside. You can put him on an island and feel like you don't have to roll help his way. And when you can do that as a defense, it opens up a ton for you in terms of what you can do with your safeties, what you can do with your linebackers. You can send a lot more pressure. 
uh, on the quarterback because you don't have to worry about, you know, putting a safety over the top. So I, I think that's where if you're using him correctly, that's what it is. What kind of guy is he? We're kind of curious how he'll fit into this locker room. Sounds like maybe he and the Saints didn't love each other by the end. Um, you guys didn't get to talk to him a whole lot, but uh, what kind of dude is he that you've gotten to know over the years? Yeah, he's he's a quiet guy, you know, and it, he's interesting because, you know, there are a lot of guys you talk to and, and they'll say a lot, but they don't say anything. Marshawn is a guy who doesn't say much, but when he talks, he's he's going to tell you things. He's going to be honest. And I honestly think that's probably part of the reason he doesn't like to talk because he's not really capable of, of, of doing the kind of coach speak thing where you, again, where you talk a lot, but don't actually reveal anything. Um, you know, he's, he's a competitive guy. He's a fiery guy. And he's, he's, he's someone who's going to kind of lead by example, right? You're not going to hear him go out there and, and talk about it. You're going to see him go out there and do it. And that's why when he's out there, you know, guys kind of rally around him. And that's the frustrating thing is he hasn't been out there enough. Um, he missed seven games last year. He missed 10 games the year before that. He's missed multiple games this year and left early in multiple games. Um, but that's, that's really who he is. He, he's a guy who's going to lead. He's going to speak through his play more so than anything else. And, you know, I, I'd like to think that in a, in an environment that feels like it's headed in the right direction, a competitive team, a team that has playoff aspirations, like the commanders do this season. Um, I think he should thrive. And the Saints just haven't been there for him in that way over the last three years. And uh, I, I, you've come to see that in that environment, he's not at his best. Um, but I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Marshawn. I've enjoyed watching him play over the last six years. So I'm happy for him because the saints are kind of rudderless right now. And you hate to see a guy kind of toil away in his prime, uh, on a team that is going nowhere. And that's the saints this year. So uh, again, I'm hopeful that in, in the environment he's going to, in a, in a competitive environment with a really exciting young quarterback and an offense that's scoring at well, what on 60% of their possessions and, uh, you know, all the defense has to go out there, is, has to do is go out there and hold serve, and they can trust that the offense can get it done behind him. I think you're going to see the best version of him. Again, it's just a question of whether he can get healthy. Jeff, great with us. Really appreciate it. Sorry the Saints are bad, but when we come down there, Bananas <laughs> Foster at Brennan's on us, buddy. Thank you. All right. Sounds good, y'all.